Hello everyone, welcome back to My Chem Corner. In today's video, we're going to do another topic from the chapter solutions. So if you're new here, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you receive notifications as and when I upload the video. Topic for today's video is talking about depression and freezing point. Now the, this is going to be very similar to what you learned, what you uh, watched in the previous video, which is elevation and boiling point. Uh, except that a few things are going to be a little different along with the symbols, but the concept is almost the same. So here, we're starting again with the same thing, which is the freezing point of the pure solvent, which is TF0. Freezing point of the non-volatile solute, which is TF. Because you're trying to freeze it, you're going to talk about solid, which means solute. That's why this, there's a change in the terms. Now again, difference is that in the freezing point, Tf delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. It's not Tb, it's Tf. Uh, so delta Tf is nothing but the depression in the freezing point. Now again, it's the same sentence here that for dilute solution, depression in freezing point is directly proportional to the molal concentration of the solute, where delta Tf is directly proportional to M, which is molality. But to take off that proportional uh, sign, you're going to add Kf there and name that equation as 1. So Kf is nothing but freezing point depression constant, molal depression constant, or it's also called as cryoscopic constant. Knowing these different terms are important because sometimes in problems, you may come across these quests, these type of terms, which will then help you identify what it means. Now again, for Kf also, the unit is going to remain the same because basically you're talking about temperature and molality. So it has to be Kelvin kg per mole. Is not much of difference in it. Now, again, try to expand the same way how we learned in elevation of boiling point. Molality is number of moles of solute by mass of solvent in kilogram. The terms mean the same and the, the, val, the, the symbols also mean the same there. If it's W2, you're talking about solute. If it's W1, you're going to talk about solvent. Substitute the same equation number 2 in equation number 1. You are going to get the same type of an equation except for that if you had delta Tb, you would have delta Tf here. If you had Kb, you would have Kf over here. So it's the same thing. And when you try to rearrange, because most of your problems are based on calculating molality, calculating molar mass, uh, you will get M2 is equal to the entire formula given there. So the problem is it's a, the equation is the same thing, but except you're, you're trying to get for delta Tb, which is for boiling point. Here is delta Tf, which is for freezing point. So the formula is pretty much the same. So well, let's try to solve a problem based on this. The question says one gram of a non-electrolyte solute is dissolved in 50 grams of benzene. Lower the freezing point of benzene by 0.4 Kelvin. The freezing point depression constant of benzene is 5.12 Kelvin kilogram per mole. Find the molar mass of the solute. So here, when we try to um, write down what the values are given to us, delta Tf is directly calculated here. Um, directly, you don't have to really calculate delta Tf, which is 0 0.40 Kelvin. W2 is given as 1 gram, which is for the solute. W1 is 50, which is for the solvent. Kf is given to us, which is 5.12 Kelvin kilogram per mole. You are asked to calculate the molar mass. Directly substitute these values in the formula. When you substitute it, you will get 256 gram per mole as your answer. So here, when you see uh, the the, um, the the calculation is pretty much simple to similar to what you did in uh, boiling point. There's not much of difference. So when you're learning them, please to compare elevation boiling point and depression freezing point and learn them. So it becomes easy for you to understand and that they are not very much different topic, but uh, probably very, very small differences that you find between both. All right. Now, the next topic is going to be osmosis, which is about the last um, uh, what is the colligative property that we are going to learn. Now, osmosis, all of us have learned, we have done experiments related to osmosis in school time. Uh, whether you take a grapes and put it in water or you put it in salt water, you would see difference in it. Right? In one, it would absorb. In one, it would throw out water. Right? So, uh, the process of osmosis is similar here. We are going to take solvent molecules and pass them through a semi-permeable membrane. All right, uh, semi-permeable membrane, we all know a simplest one that you can use is animal membrane. Uh, these are all very simple semi-permeable membrane that we can um, use. Uh, now, the semi-permeable membrane, which is like a sac that's basically going to be filled in with uh, solvent molecules, you're taking that and you're placing it into a beaker that contains a solution. Now, what will happen? 
is that the solid molecules, the concentration in the bag is solid molecules. Solid molecules are going to flow from them to the, to the membrane into the solution. So this particular flow of the molecule from the solvent into the solution is called as osmosis. Now this, the entire flow is going to continue. It's not going to be always, but it will continue till an equilibrium is achieved, which means there are equal amounts of reactant and product on either side. Till then, you will have this process continuing till an equilibrium is attained. attained. Now, this flow, say you want to stop that flow. You wanted a particular amount to flow. You've done it, but you want to stop it. So, well, then what do you do? At the solution side, you try to apply some pressure because the solvent particles are moving from the bag into the solution. So, at the solution side, when you add apply pressure, you're trying to stop the flow. That pressure is called as osmotic pressure. That osmotic pressure is a colligative property because it's going to depend on the number of solute particles now. All right. So for dilute solutions, again, we use the same uh, sentence. Osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the molarity of the solution. So osmotic pressure is given as the symbol pi. Concentration C is nothing but molarity. Because you are dealing with some molecules over here, you have gas constant as R and T is temperature. All right. So this is the equation you are going to use to further calculate your uh, problems. Now, in this case, you take out concentration. Concentration is nothing but molarity. So that's nothing but number of moles of solute by volume of solution in liters. When you try to expand them and substitute it, number of moles of solute is nothing but W2 by N2 divided by V itself. So this entire equation that you see here except RT is nothing but the term for molarity. That is the equation you're going to use for further calculation of problems related to uh, osmotic osmosis in this particular topic. So you have a question here. It says 200 centimeter cube of an aqueous solution of protein contains 1.26 grams of protein. Osmotic pressure of such a solution at 300 Kelvin is found to be 2.57 10 to the power minus 3 bar. Calculate the molar mass of the protein. So first thing, let's write down what is given to us. In this case, W2 is given to us, which is 1.26. R is a gas constant. T here is temperature. It's given to us as 300 Kelvin in the question. Pi is the osmotic pressure, which is 2.57 10 to the power minus 3 bar. And volume is given to us as 200 centimeter cube. When you convert it to liters, it's going to be 0.2 liters. Now, why is your gas constant as 0.083 bar? When it was 8.314, it's going to be kilobar. But here it's going to be in bar because the pressure is in bar. So we convert this also into bar. When we substitute these values, you get your answer as 61.038 10 to the power 3 gram per mole. That's going to be our answer for this particular problem. All right. Now, if two solutions have the same osmotic pressure, obviously we will have solutions more than one in a beaker. So if you have two solutions with the same osmotic pressure at a given temperature, such solutions are called as isotonic solution. A solution with a higher osmotic pressure is called as hypotonic. If they have lower osmotic pressure, it's called as hypotonic. These terms are important because you can be asked one mark questions based on these kind of terminologies. So you should know what they mean. Now, a 0.9% solution of NaCl in water is called as a normal saline water. We all know that. It is an isotonic solution with the fluid inside human RBC. This is the normal saline solution that is there in uh, human red blood cells. Now, in this solution, blood corpuscles neither swell nor shrink. And that is why most of our medicines are mixed in normal saline and then they are given intravenous injection. Intravenous injection, I mean, by giving an injection directly to the vein. Now, when they do that, you can't directly put the medicine into it. You need to mix it in saline, normal saline water. When you mix in normal saline water, what happens is our blood cells will neither shrink nor it will swell. So that is, that's why we use a normal saline water. And normal saline water is nothing but 0.9% solution of sodium chloride in water. Solution of any saline water with a concentration more than that particular is called as hypertonic. If it has more than 0.9%, which is the concentration of a normal saline water, then we call it as hypertonic. Now, in such kind of hypertonic solution, if you place the blood cells, what happens is they would shrink. 
Now, if it is the opposite, if it is less than 0.9%, then it is called as hypotonic solution. If you place a red bed cells into it, it would swell. So, if you vary the concentration of a normal saline water and you try to put an intravenous injection, it will affect the RBC. So that's why we need a normal saline water with 0.9% of NaCl into it so that your blood cells will neither shrink nor it will swell. Now, when you learn osmosis, you always learn of something called as reverse osmosis. This is something that you see in uh, filter waters, filters this year, this uh, uh, nowadays. All, all of us have filters at home through which we drink water. There you have reverse osmosis. Now, what does this reverse osmosis mean? The process of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure larger than osmotic pressure is applied. Now, under these conditions, the solvent molecules move from solution to the solvent. A reverse happens to the semi-permeable membrane. Now, where do we use this particular process? It is used in desalination of seawater. Now, when pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied, pure water is squeezed out of, of the seawater. What will happen? All the salt that is there will be remaining in the uh, out, uh, there itself and the remaining pure water will be squeezed out. The pressure required for reverse osmosis is very high because you are moving from a very high concentration to a low concentration. So, in this case, trying to squeeze out that seawater, pure seawater is going to be difficult. The type of a, of a membrane that you can use for this is a film of cellulose acetate. Now, cellulose acetate is only permeable to water. It cannot permit anything else. It will not allow any ions or any impurities from the seawater. So, this is something that they use when they want to uh, remove salt from seawater and give only pure water. Alright. So, that was all about today's video. Uh, when I'm talking about uh, the, 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 the colligative properties related to osmosis or um, or uh, about the freezing point, the depression in freezing point, I hope this video has been helpful to you all the, regarding the problems or any topic related to these topics. Um, if there is any suggestion or any inquiries, please don't hesitate to write an email or send uh, write down your uh, suggestions in the comment box and I will see through it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.